Hi there, and welcome to the Paula Fiscal Show. My show airs at 3 o'clock p.m. every Sunday on Channel 29, and there are reruns on Channel 76. All of the shows are also uploaded to YouTube. So when you go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, hopefully, and then you press subscribe so that we can tell how many viewers we have. In this world of social media, it's so critical and so important to keep informed. And that's the logo of the show. Stay informed. And because of this, what we like to do is bring in women in business, Sometimes they're actors, sometimes they are talent scouts. In this particular instance, we have a woman entrepreneur who has started her own businesses in San Francisco. Miss Lisa is going to tell you a bit about how she got started and why she decided she wanted to start a business in San Francisco. Lisa, welcome. Hi, Paula. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. It's great to be here. I have been in the fashion business my entire adulthood career. Uh, didn't plan on it, but as I was graduating from college, found myself working in various retail jobs and found that it was truly my passion. I worked my way up at Macy's from an assistant manager all the way into the buying offices. And from there, left and ran a small chain local women's clothing stores in San Francisco for many, many years. I took a break from that and went into product development and manufacturing, again, also for a local San Francisco company here where we made products for department stores. And although that was a wonderful opportunity, I really miss small business and I miss working directly with the customer, especially helping women. And so you also said that you have a personal shopping situation, personal shopper service that you can do, but let's go back just a few minutes to the name of your stores. They are SF Siren. How did you come up with this name? Well, that's a great question. I live in the sunset and I actually live across the street from the beach and was thinking about opening a business in San Francisco and all the things about San Francisco that are important to us and our lifestyle. And siren really struck a chord with the power uh, that symbolizes the siren and also the duality of the tail and the feminine and thinking how women we wake up and we go to yoga, we go to the gym, work out to dinner and wanting to have a lifestyle store that, that encompassed that. And the store that you just opened now is in West Portal. How did you make a determination as to which area you were going to open up your stores? Well, as I mentioned, I live in the Sunset, and I felt that West Portal is a wonderful community and shopping area, and that it was lacking in a little bit more younger aesthetic that could appeal to all generations and all women. And I really felt that the community, myself included, needed a, a local, a locally owned and catered to the local customer in that neighborhood. And when you say local, that means that women can come in and men can come in and take a look at your inventory. You can also uh, assist them in styling. Talk a bit about the whole concept around having a stylist, for example. Well, I'll absolutely talk to that. When you say local, one of the things that I felt was amiss in, in San Francisco is needing more small business that understands the San Francisco customer. For example, we need great layering pieces year round. We need casual, but not too casual because we do a lot of day into evening. Our shoes need to be fashionable and we like an edge, but we also have hills and we do a lot of walking. So 
again, a locally owned and buying for the San Francisco customer. And, and how does a shopping party work? Oh, great question. So, for example, in West Portal in a couple weeks, there is a mom's group that gets together on Monday evenings and they approached me and said they would like to come to the store and shop and we're going to have that store closed and it will be just for these 20 women and we will have light bites and spirits and these women will literally take over the store and we'll be able to dedicate a hundred percent of our time and energy just to them. So that particular kind of an event, it lends itself well for example, the many tourists that we have that come into the city, you can book in advance and take a look at SF Siren and certainly Lisa can also assist on a personal basis when you go into the stores in which case then that would be called a personal shopper like the movie stars have. Absolutely and we I, we are dedicated to training our staff to making it a great experience so it doesn't just need to be with me however I would love to be able to offer that and that would be with a little bit of a, an appointment so that I can make sure that what you're looking for I've pulled together and done all the hard work for you where we're just simply trying on and styling on and hopefully making the most of your time and also having you walk out with things that you absolutely love and maybe wouldn't have picked out yourself. And that's one of the important factors to remember is that just because you've always worn black or just because you've always worn blue it's time to get into a little bit of a change and it's difficult to do so when you go into a store such as Lisa's SF Siren in West Portal you'll get an opportunity to have her or her staff recommend to you perhaps a color you've never thought of like an orange or a burgundy Although I know that most of the women in the city like to wear black, 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 but we got to get out of mourning, ladies, and uh, get some color into our lives. And speaking of color, when we look at the different tones of the clothing industry, remember, yes, Amazon can deliver clothing, but when you get them, you don't know what you're getting. If you go into a store, you can touch and feel and try instantaneously. You don't have to wait to see how something fits. Now, Lisa, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about those new services that are offered where you sign up, you give them a certain amount of money, and they send you a package complete, outfitted with a blouse, a pair of pants, shoes, jewelry. You know what I'm talking about. How do you see those services? I. I have heard people really enjoy some of those services. I feel with women in San Francisco, we have access to so much fashion where I understand if you're living in an area where you don't have access to shopping, why that might be a benefit. But what I find is that it's an algorithm and it's very generic where I think to come into a store and have, instead of uh, several pieces to choose from, hundreds of pieces to choose from that fit right, that the right quality, the right colors, I think you're going to get more bang for your buck and hopefully enjoy what you wear more if you take the time to have them curated specifically for you. And in saying this, then what happens is you go into a store and you gravitate, for example, uh, I myself, I always gravitate towards the back of the store because all clothing stores have their sale items at the back, that I like to get a bargain and I like to see, for example, what was in season and uh, maybe is half price. So how do you deal with the bargain hunter who constantly shifts and, 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 and rifles through all of the for sale items and, and then tries to pick something that probably isn't going to look good? Do you just casually walk over to the other side of the store and recommend something else? Well, that's a good question. I, I think the sale area is a, is a great place to shop. And when women ask their opinion, I, we do our best and I train our staff that we want you to walk out of the store and love everything that you put on. So whether it's on the $20 rack sale item or a brand new item, it's not about how much you spend. It's about how it looks on you and how you feel in it. So we're, you know, the sale area is a great 
thing for business because we constantly are rotating our stock and hopefully you'll find lots of great deals there in West Portal particularly. We know that the sale area there is very popular and we're constantly trying to keep it interesting to the customers and we do rotate the stock between the Chestnut, the Hayes and the West Portal store. So what about the Chestnut store? Is it true that as you go towards the Bay Area in San Francisco, your clothing colors get lighter? Yes, I, it, I would say that is actually an astute observation. Uh, in Chestnut Street, they definitely wear more color. They wear, I would say, they show a little more skin. Um, and it's also Chestnut Street has a tourist and people from all sorts of, you know, we, yes, in San Francisco, we like our earth tones and we gravitate towards black. But in Chestnut Street, we can carry more color because we have enough tourists that are also looking for it. So I think it's a combination of um, the local customer there and also the tourists coming to San Francisco. And Well, I always notice that when I hang out on, in Chestnut, on Chestnut Street or Union Street, you do see women wearing white. Now they're not all tourists. So what is this trend uh, among the wearing of white for San Francisco women? I, you know, I, I really don't know, but you are absolutely right that I would say in the marina area, we do sell a lot more white, beige, cream, um, and a lot of requests for white denim, and I haven't cracked that code, but uh, it's, <laughs> and maybe uh, women in the other areas of San Francisco, we should, uh, like you said, break out of our mold and try it on. Exactly, and uh, in saying that, we also know that women that own boutiques here in San Francisco, we know that you have to go and leave town to visit some of the outlets and distributors. So do you continuously go with the ready to wear boys or do you go to uh, shows? How is it that you make your selection as to where you're going to go? I mean, do you go to Paris? Do you go to Italy? Do you go to Greece? I have a friend that used to be in business and she said she would always get her products from Canada. So how do you make your selections? Well, that's another great question. For right now, I'm primarily shopping Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. Would love to go to Paris and Greece uh, in the very near future if the business needs warrant that. But really, I'm out there looking for a varied selection at the best quality and the best price, always trying to scour for domestically made, organic, low impact, whenever possible, but also understanding that women enjoy, as you mentioned, you like that sale area, but women enjoy varied price points, but we don't necessarily have time to go to 30 different stores. So what we try to offer at SF Siren is the best value for the quality for the item. So maybe, for example, a pair of jeans that maybe warrant a $200 price point because they're high quality and you're gonna wear them a lot, but maybe a novelty fun top that's gonna be in fashion for a short time, and we try to keep that price point well under $50 because because that's how a lot of women shop, that's how I shop, and I don't necessarily want, again, to go to 30 different stores to achieve that balance. Now let's talk a bit about what the Hayes Valley women are wearing these days. Hayes Valley is also very interesting because you get a combination of women from all over the city or people from all over the city, but also the Bay Area with the arts, with the symphony, the opera, theater down there. And then we get a lot of European tourists. Interestingly enough, Paula, I've had a lot of Australians this week and they are, they are eating up our early spring because they're going home and, you know, it's summer. So. Uh, uh, this, again, yes, yeah. this is the time that we have our Australian tourists. Yes, true. And right after the Australians come the, I believe it's, is it Germans after the Australians? And uh, so my question earlier was, if you go somewhere and you're looking for a particular product for the San Francisco market, do you actually go to say for example in LA we don't dress like we're from Los Angeles so when some of those products that you're looking at how do you decide if you're going to go with the fringe or not the fringe or leather or, or faux leather and fur how does that look well I think it's important the look of the store 
I say is a refined bohemian. So I'm really trying to offer garments that you're not going to find everywhere else. But you do need some basics. We do carry some brands that you've heard of because they're great staple pieces. But really looking for unusual, San Francisco eclectic, refined boho. And again, it's a bit of a trial and error because really the customer dictates what she wants. I'll try something and if the customers love it, we do it again. If we try something and, the, and it goes on the sale rack right away, well, we know that is not something that, that women are interested in. Well, for example, I know that um, the music artists and the, the movie stars, they start a trend and then we all pick it up, some of them anyway. And for example, you talked about having jeans in the store. Aren't jeans a little bit difficult to sell to a woman, particularly if you go in and try on a pair of jeans, you have to have like 20 pairs before you decide? Well, I think again from being in the business for so long and seeing women every single day try on clothes, denim is selling incredibly well and we're just being very careful about looking for, again, the right quality and the right price and learning from our experiences with our customers and tweaking our assortment that way. But one of the great things I have to say about all of the locations and especially West Portal, we literally will have mothers and daughters, granddaughters and grandmothers shopping in the same store. So we really do have something for everyone and continue to strive towards that. So you have a cross-generational target market. And when you first started to uh, consider opening up a store in San Francisco, did you hire a research analyst or a business development specialist to determine what your market was going to be? No, actually, no, I didn't. Again, having worked in San Francisco as a, as a clothing professional for quite some time, really wanted to have a point of view, which was that it, it's not about an age, it's about an aesthetic and offering an aesthetic that would be San Francisco centric and catering to the San Francisco woman and adjusting as the customer makes her or their needs known. Let's talk a little bit more about the special event that uh, you provide the, your store, it's a venue, you would bring in a group of people and they would come in, bring hors d'oeuvres, perhaps serve champagne, and that also brings in a group of people because, as you know, we as women, many women, never shop alone. They always bring somebody with them, if for no other reason than to help with the zipper and back. So the problem with many women such as myself in the business world, when we don't travel around with an entourage or, or a crew, so we go in and we go and, and we grab what we are always grabbing. For me, it's always jackets. Like I have this jacket on that is from your store and it's in my color because you can tell this is my own necklace and it's got the, the gray trim and everything. And Lisa didn't even know that about me, although she's met me a couple of times and, and uh, she already knows what my style is. So that's really what it comes down to is you go into her stores and she can read your style in a very short amount of time and she can bring three or four or five different pieces of garments to you that you hadn't really considered a floppy sleeve for example or a um, low cut dress another example but when you put it on it actually looks decent so did you start at a young age Lisa to dress? Were you working with dolls? Were you dressing up your little brother? How, how is it that you began with your ac actual styling? I wish I could say that I dressed my dolls. I have to say I was a, really a tomboy. Um, but I will say I, in high school I started to love fashion and trends and really enjoyed that part. And then after college, I worked in retail management and truly, truly loved dressing. I was always in women's boutiques dressing women and having them leave feeling really good about themselves. And going back to what you were saying for the events, the, the thing about the events isn't only 
to have a great shopping experience and, and have a, the store to the, a group of people to themselves. It's also, I think, for small business, it's part of a community now. So to create this social environment where friends can interact, where I as a local businesswoman can get to know women in the community, people in the community, and sort of make it like a, 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 part, a, a part of the community that, that surpasses just a retail store. And today you've brought a few pieces there behind Lisa. Can you tell us about uh, the pieces that you brought in? Yeah, so today we have a, a dress, a pair of jeans, a top, some, a necklace. And again, they're, this is their vendors that are uh, American designers with varied price points and with varied styles. And again, I think that that's what I'm trying to achieve in the store. And I know, Paula, when you've shopped with me, you could buy everything from a t-shirt and a pair of shorts to go to Napa for the weekend, or you can buy a dress that will go to a wedding or I know, a, or, or a cocktail uh, hour occasion. So really hoping to just create a, a one-stop shop for women that you don't have to go downtown. You're not going to a mall. Well, let me tell you, if you go downtown, you have to get parking and you have to give yourself time to come back and, and you're always trying to schedule when there's not going to be so much traffic. So the nice thing about your being in local neighborhood areas like the Hayes Valley and uh, Chestnut area, and particularly West Portal, you can find parking. So you're not going to go crazy trying to park somewhere. So in your stores, why don't you tell us also about the inventory that you carry? You said you carry some local brands and you try to buy American? Absolutely. Again, it's a new business, so the brands that we carry in the store are constantly shifting and going to trade shows m monthly, um, looking for the best quality, the best fashion for our customers, always looking for local designers, anything sustainable, um, you know, again, just really looking for a combination of quality, aesthetic, following trends, understanding the customer, and really creating an environment of a store that reflects the needs of the San Francisco customer. Can you give us a couple of the names of the designers that you carry? Absolutely. So we carry staples like Paige and AG Denim. We have some brands. There's Love Stitch. It's a Los Angeles company. There are some local companies like Porto in San Francisco that's actually made and designed in San Francisco. There's another company up in a woman from the Bay Area that's now in the Portland area, Luscious Jewelry, who makes fabulous jewelry and also employs women cooperative to help her with her product and is very active in um, philanthropy. And so really looking at brands that, again, style, quality, price, but also looking for brands that we believe in and that we're excited to promote. Again, the store really focuses on a broad aesthetic where you could get everything from, say, a $20 t-shirt to a cocktail dress that may cost a couple hundred dollars. You could get a $20 pair of earrings, and you can get a cute pair of shoes for well under $100. So your store then caters to the San Francisco women, but you also have some women from Australia. So I know you have a background in, um, how do we say, other local marketing. So do you use the social media, for example, or how is it best to reach you? We do have a website currently, which is San Francisco Siren, or sfsiren.com. We have a website that you can look at called sfsiren.com. And we are ramping up our social media. Again, it's a new business. So we are going to have working on our Facebook page and also Instagram, which is very important, but that, to be honest with you, is still in work right now. Well, you've only been open for six months in the West Portal uh, store, but how long have your Hayes Valley and your Chestnut stores been open? So Chestnut Street opened in July of uh, last year, West Portal in September, and Hayes in October. So we've been very, very busy getting the brick and mortar stores set and established and hired and working on that portion of the business. And talking about brick and mortar, 
Was it difficult to get a um, space that was not $40,000 a month? Yes, I mean, that's the irony in small business right now. I think in our community, we want clothing stores, we want restaurants, but we also want to shop online. So, you know, it's really tough right now with the crazy rents out there and retail being what it is. So I think it's important if you want to be able to shop at your local clothing store on your way home from work and pop over to grab a dress and you're a night out to remember that, yes, the rents are astronomical and we are certainly working very, very hard to make sure that the business thrives and that we can continue to stay in, in, in these locations. And how about talking a bit about uh, your marketing? So you're going to, you have a website, you're going to ramp up and get on the rest of the social media. And uh, what about Yelp? What do you think about Yelp? I really don't know a, a lot about Yelp. I haven't used it as a business consumer. I definitely understand the importance of online reviews, and I understand how many people use Yelp for information. Uh, that kind of marketing haven't really explored. Primarily, we have customers that subscribe to our email list, and customers that do subscribe to the email list will get special perks and we can let them know about events and things we're doing in the store. You can also subscribe to our email list by going to our website at www.sfsiren.com, www.sfsiren.com, and scroll down to the bottom and subscribe to join the email list and you will be um, on the first to know of any events or discounts. My show airs at 3 o'clock p.m. every Sunday on Channel 29 and there are reruns on Channel 76. All of the shows are also uploaded to YouTube. So when you go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, hopefully, and then you press subscribe so that we can tell how many viewers we have. In this world of social media, it's so critical and so important to keep informed. And that's the logo of the show. Stay informed. <laughs> Thank you.